Grant Magani, the founder of Lipta. Uh, let's, let's explain how you, uh, how you build it and um, where you're going to take it further. That's wonderful that you did that together. Thank you. Welcome in Amsterdam. <clears throat> now. All right, hi guys. It's really a pleasure to be here. Um, it's super cool actually to, to follow my wife in her presentation. The, we have a third co-founder too, he's, he's really great too, so things have worked out really well. Uh, like Masha said, we started with Ascribe. We are still shipping Ascribe, all of that. Um, we really care about the creators of the internet, uh, but we ran into a challenge and that was scale. So I will get, get into what we did as a solution. Big Chain DB, a scalable blockchain database. Now, press the button. Press the button. There we go. Cool. Awesome. So I, I'm going to take a step back here, actually, and think about if you're a web developer um, making some application, you know, one of the thousands of startups throughout the world, um, this is kind of what the stack looks like. At the very top, you've got an application, something like Facebook or Netflix or Google Maps, hopefully, <laughs> um, if you get to that scale. Um, and this could be mobile. This could be um, on, the, on your laptop, however you like. And that's the application level. But there's the cloud below, um, an Amazon cloud, an Azure cloud, whatever it is. And that really has three main components. You've got the processing portion, which could be running, for example, Amazon EC2, the Elastic Compute Cloud. You've got a file system, which is actually storing things like data blobs, maybe hierarchically organized. Maybe you have Google Drive, that sort of thing. And you've got a database. And the database is actually also storing data like a file system, but they're very different. A database, the a databases go back decades, and they're really about finding data based on a query, based on a one line of code that would replace 500 or 5,000 even lines of custom code, and they're fast. So we have SQL, the relational databases going back decades, and in the last 10 years, things like MongoDB and other NoSQL databases. So these are key to any modern cloud application. Then along came Bitcoin, this magic internet money. Lots of people have talked about it today. And really, it sparked a revolution. That, that revolution started with applications related to, to money, but a lot of people recognized that you could actually use it as sort of a database that was decentralized. So remembering which artist, for example, timestamps which thing, transferring ownership, that sort of thing. But you could actually even keep the rest of the stack the same if you wanted, because going for the jugular, the core value is in that database itself. Um, so you have these applications on top that are partly decentralized, such as Ascribe. There's many others built on top of Bitcoin. So this is what we built with Ascribe. But, you know, there's a lot of um, hope and rhetoric around the idea of Bitcoin at planetary scale. And if you think about planetary scale, uh, global email actually runs at more than 3 million transactions per second. Even the Visa network itself runs at 2,000. Uh, Twitter at 5,000. At peak loads, 150,000. A bad ad network is 100,000 transactions per second. A good one is 500. A good trading system is 500,000 transactions per second. So we, we need planetary scale. Bitcoin and the other um, systems out there, most of them, are running at, you know, Bitcoin is a max of seven transactions per second. The network backs up at 1.5 transactions per second. I can talk faster than that, right? Ethereum, you know, 2030, they have lots of great scalability plans, but th that's still um, very early software. We might ask, well, what else is at planetary scale? Well, you know, there, there is this concept of distributed databases, big data databases. And for example, Netflix. Netflix is using 37% of bandwidth of the internet. That's one application. How does it do it? It's using a modern distributed database, big data. This is you know, another sort of buzzword, but there's actually real technology behind it that has been developing over the last several decades. Now, of course, this is centralized. So um, there's a single entity that owns and controls that instance of that database. So it's distributed, as in the compute resources are spread across many, many, many nodes, but it's centralized control. One question we can ask is, can we remove the centralized? And in doing so, get the scale we need, but also decentralized control. There's a way. This is actually the question we asked. How do we decentralize big data? And what you can do is basically these um, distributed databases, they're all running already, a bunch of nodes, 20 nodes, 50 nodes, even 500 nodes. What you can do is you can say each node is a federation node. Each node is an independent legal entity that controls that node. And each node doesn't store all the data. If you do, you kill the scalability. But each node is a node in the federation. You've got three or five or 10 copies of the data total. So that's really the core. You're decentralizing it in that there is no single entity that owns or controls that database. That is really the key. It's actually not easy to do. 
but you can do it. Then you add the other key characteristics related to blockchains, like immutability, the idea of etching the stone, and assets, the ability to register assets, transfer assets, et cetera. What this does, this is what we did for BigchainDB. We built on top of a world-class database called RethinkDB. Um, and it, the technology works generally, actually, across other databases, too. This brings in the best of big data. You've got the scale you need. Uh, you have petabyte-style capacity. We have benchmarks showing more than 1 million writes per second. Um, and, and even end-to-end -end with all the transactions, more than 100,000, 200,000 tr um, transactions per second. You have querying, which is a key asset of databases. But also you have the best of blockchain. You've got decentralization, you've got immutability, all of this. This technology exists today. It's open source software, it's on GitHub, you can find it. Uh, we also wrote a white paper on it, by the way, so if any of you guys want to look into the details, go for it. So creating a digital asset, it's just a few lines of Python code, and guess what? It looks a lot like using databases, because it is a database. You, you can register an asset in standard ways, you can uh, read the asset, it's all in JSON, so it's a JSON-style document store. So very straightforward for any modern web developer to use. Um, and what this means is now you can start with an existing centralized stack and say, OK, I want to just dip my toe into this and then move to something partly decentralized. So you can maintain um, you know, your cloud stack, whatever you want, but now you add one additional database. That's it. So b sitting beside your MySQL, sitting beside your MongoDB, you have something like BigchainDB sitting there as part of this federation of nodes decentralized. And if you want, you can even go fully decentralized. There's actually a stack emerging. So if, um, you have decentralized applications that are sitting on top of decentralized processing. Things like Ethereum is the leader there, of course. Decentralized file system. There's something called IPFS, which is quite amazing. And things below that, too, things like Ethereum Sworn and Namecoin. And then the decentralized database, BigchainDB. There's a public version that we've announced called BigchainDB. Uh, we've thought about governance a lot. We just announced this last week. Um, we have a lot of users. I, I, Leanne from Everledger, I think she's scheduled to talk later today. Um, so hopefully, anyway, we're very happy with working with her. She's great. Um, medical, like there was a talk earlier, so we're working with companies on medical supply chain. Uh, we're working with um, leading people in the energy space, RWE from Germany. Um, and Ascribe, as Masha talked about. So overall, this is BigchainDB. It's a scalable blockchain database. It brings in the best ideas from big data and from blockchains. Um, you can go to bigchaindb.com and learn more or ask me questions all you like. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, you're the guy I need because Leon just called me. She missed her plane. She's still in London. <laughs> She's stuck. I mean, we have people in, in everywhere. So tell us shortly, what does Leon with Everledger, can you explain what she does and using your technology, being scalable and everything? Of course, yeah. So um, roughly speaking, it's diamonds on the blockchain and it's about provenance. So just like Masha talked about provenance of, of art, physical yeah. or digital, and that's really, really crucial because it's an asset with some degree of scarcity. In the case of diamonds, you know, you don't want to buy a diamond that is a blood diamond, you know, that, or that was found with, uh, via, you know, dug up via child labor. There's a, about 20 or 50 ways that you, fraud can happen with diamonds. And what Everledger does is, is adds a big layer of transparency by everyone in the ecosystem, the mines, the certification houses, the, the retailers, um, in All the, the ecosystem. legal entities. Yeah, everything yeah. along. So the, yeah. And there's the legal entities, so Interpol, as well as the insurance house providers, all these, they're all working together with Leanne and creating this ecosystem around transparency for diamonds. And then, of course, you know, there's a lot of diamonds in the world, more all the time. So, um, you know, Bitcoin isn't very good at swallowing that sort of thing. Um, but this is something where, you know, it, it's breakfast for Big Chain DB. Mm -hmm. So um, that's where we work with Leanne on that. And we actually because she already has a lot of diamonds registered. Exactly. How many do you know? Uh, more than a million. Um, I, I think there's wow. even bigger numbers. So we work closely. And actually, with Leanne, we did some data mining. One really cool thing of blockchains is it encourages um, companies with their silos of data to merge their data. So in this case, it was the certification houses. They merged all their data together. And then we could um, data mine and cross-reference among them. And actually, we discovered, working with Leanne, about 7% fraud. And um, that was on a major online retailer. It worked up to more than about a billion dollars worth of fraud per year from just that retailer with these certified Did the diamonds. retailer know about every? No, uh, no. So no. this is completely new data. So this is actually really cool sort of interaction between big data and machine learning and blockchain, right? Blockchain actually um, unlocks all these new possibilities because it's, these data silos are getting merged together. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a really great use case overall, diamonds, yeah. Yeah, okay, so that is somebody who's not coming, stuck in London, and Leanna, but she, she has a very uh, fantastic business. She has a fantastic presentation, but we're not gonna 
see her today on stage, but she's a good uh, client. She was an interesting client of yours. Yeah. So you have a database which can do, you, can, you have a blockchain system uh, which can do 100,000 transactions per what? Uh, so the, the raw database below, we yeah. benchmarked it actually yeah. at more than 1 million rights per second. And right now we've been benchmarking everything end to end and continuing to optimize, and it's hitting 100,000, 200,000 transactions per second. Okay. And this is actually just Python code. So we know that we're going to be able to get to the 1 million transactions per second raw with more, with more optimization. So, okay. and yeah. then, but you're also using the blockchain. So which part, of the, which part are you then storing in the blockchain, in the Bitcoin blockchain? Because oh, no, you, no, there's no, no. That so. is all, that's completely separate. So there is no store of data that is separate than BigchainDB. BigchainDB yeah. is a database, yeah. right? At the core of every database in the world, you have consensus algorithms that go back decades, mm -hmm. right? You know, the BFT was from the early 80s, Paxos, yeah. Raft, mm -hmm. all these things, right? Um, that's at the core of these databases. It's also at the, and there's new consensus that Satoshi invented based on proof of work, et cetera, right? But it's another way at the core, what's consensus? It's about ordering transactions. That's it, no mm -hmm. more, no less. There's all this stuff on top, but at the core, um, you're ordering transactions coming in to store your data. So. Yeah. We have a database that's storing these transactions, ordering them, and then on top, though, it's deciding, is this transaction valid, yes or no, yes or no? And that's where the federation comes in. The federation votes, yes. Um, you know, there's 15 nodes in a federation, say. Eight of them say, yes, this is good. The, the, then that transaction is considered valid. So overall, it's a database with blockchain characteristics. And interestingly, um, if you think about it, you know, Blockchains themselves can easily be framed as databases themselves, right? It's just they of don't course. have querying. Yeah. It's sort of like you know they're half broken in a sense because they don't have querying, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? But um, I mean that, yeah, that's the other that's aspect what, of a database. That's what Kevin said. It's a yeah. really clumsy, slow-moving, complicated uh, database. Yeah. yeah. If you think about those blockchain explorers where you're scrolling through the, the transactions, that's a horrible interface for data. It's right? horrible. That's yeah. why query languages were invented, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, but, but you do you have a database of, of, of these transactions, and what is your connection then to the blockchain uh, verification method? Is there a connection at all? So because, I mean, for the art, mm -hmm. yep. she said it was stored, yep. the, in the, the key is stored in the... Uh, so there's a connection between the blockchain of Bitcoin and your system. So we started with the Bitcoin blockchain, but then we ran into problems of scale. For example, one yep. customer had 100,000 images, or one customer we were talking to had 100,000 images going through a day. Every day, right? Yeah. If we put that into the Bitcoin blockchain, it no, would swamp it was, the network, no, right? Yeah. We, um, on, the, on another project, we actually indexed uh, 15 billion images from the web. If we put that into the Bitcoin blockchain, it would tie it up no, for a century, okay, yeah, right? Yeah. So we needed scale, right? <laughs> okay. um, and so we said, OK, let's start from first principles. What is it that a blockchain does? What is it that databases do? And how do we bring the best of those, both worlds? So BigchainDB has blockchain characteristics of decentralization, immutability, and re assets, registering assets, transferring okay. assets. There is no separate blockchain. As Scribe, we're going to be porting it to this public big chain DB that we've rolled out called IPDB, Interplanetary Database, mm -hmm. right? So, um, and it actually plays well with IPFS, Interplanetary File System. There's, there's a lot of links. So. Interplanetary File System. Yes, okay. yes. Uh, super cool technology. Check it out if you haven't seen it. It's, it's really great. <laughs> uh, decentralized File System, right? It's actually yeah. uh, I, I, that is that is decentralized if you go over planets. Yeah, I think. Uh, well, I, no, this I, is this is really key. Like um, we, we can yeah. uh, joke about it, but uh, no, no, that no. Name I mean, VidServe is somebody I really admire. Yeah. He came up with a system with a naming convention and 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 also and how TCP/IP should work over interplanetary system yeah, because exactly. you have eight waits, yeah. eight seconds waiting before the block uh, yeah. uh, arrives. So uh, network actually, networks. Yeah. And, and here's a really cool thing. There was a conference last week in <laughs> SF at Internet Archive. You know, if there's a physical place for the internet, it's Internet Archive. There really isn't. But anyway, um, at that conference, um, there was a small number of people, but among them, Vint Cerf, inventor of the internet protocol, TCP. Uh, that's what I was talking about. Um, yeah. Tim Berners-Lee, inventor of the World Wide Web, and a bunch of the, the young builders that are building these key um, pieces of the infrastructure for the next generation internet. We're not replacing the internet. We're building no. new protocols on top. Big Chain DB can play a big role, IPFS, Ethereum, all of these, and it's actually really exciting. We are actually getting to rewire the internet on behalf of creators, on behalf of identity, on behalf of all these things that we didn't want to, like, that we couldn't before. Is that a nice big idea? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Wonderful. Yeah. It's so